Okay, so we're going to call it in order. It is 6 p.m. October 21st. Uh, like the number one, number two, I'd like to move meeting uh, minutes of last and last month's meeting. Thank you, Matt. Do you want me to do this also? Do I have any questions, concerns? Can I make a motion to accept them as written? Yes, you can. I get a second. Tracy's going to second it. Any discussion? Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes? All those opposed? You know this? All right, survey questions, discussion. I know that uh, we had forwarded our survey questions. I did not see everybody else's survey questions. They were, you guys were the only committee assigned to do that. Okay. Nobody else is going to put any questions together and start ahead. No. The idea was you guys were going to put them together and then we were going to talk about them as a group. So thank you for doing that. Okay. So I put them on the agenda. I think I'm still there. They did the assignment. Mm -hmm. press the assignment. No, no, no. You didn't. Press the, you were close to me, but you yeah. didn't have the specific assignment of the survey questions. I was that group did. Okay. okay, so questions. First one If Wisconsin was, was no longer to offer a high school to uh, yeah. offer a high school to students in that town, are you willing to accept any, or, any of our high school students? If so, how many could you accommodate? That would be the first question. Does anybody have any discussion or questions about that? These are questions. For context, these are questions that would go to other towns. Yes. To the communities, to the school boards, to the superintendents, well, depending on the town. The the superintendents. Yeah. The town, whether it be the school boards or the Yes. So, well, you it would, would have to be the school boards or the superintendents. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not a community survey or anything like that. Just a question. Mm -hmm. and then, I, it seems like it would be useful to say uh, what would be the process to make that decision. We're not going to get that answer, I don't think, because whoever it's against, we probably won't have the authority to make that decision. So there would be a process that, and they would probably need a certain amount of information. So I, I think it's it's a question it's that can't. a matter of getting information, I think, as far as if there was availability to or you know able to accommodate our students if we did as the interest payment. So follow up the process after that. Yeah, I just I just think you're you're gonna send it you're you're unlikely to get an answer, I think, because there's likely to be consideration. Mm -hmm. So it might be worth asking what what information would be needed or what steps would be needed to make this decision. That's just so what a suggestion. would be the process for you to come to a decision on this? I mean, it could be a sub a sub question, but mm -hmm. yes. So what would you need from us? Yeah, yes, and slash but. One, I think you definitely have to send some sort of introduction to this along yeah. with it. Right. But two, while I understand your point, the point of these questions is just to gauge interest. It's mm -hmm. not, we know there's a process that they would have to go to, but I, but I mean, others can pipe in, but for me, part of the point of this is, are there ones out there, which I'm assuming there are, that are, are just a definite no? They just simply don't have room, no matter what process we went through? Or are there ones that, in theory, could have? We certainly aren't finding questions. So 
maybe that would be the better question. Does your facility have the capacity to absorb 100 additional oh, high that's students? That's a question. Hmm? That's a question. Ah, okay. Uh, right. That is actually the next one. We're your school system committed to being our school of record. We believe this could mean around 100 students. Yeah. We also believe that not all students would choose to go to the school of record because they're coming from different communities. There could be nine, there could be. Could be 100, could be 75, could be 60. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they can legally answer that question, can they? That's kind of my it's point. It's pretty formal. Yeah. Come in. Mm -hmm. Is the question, do you want us, or is the question, could you take us? Could you? Because then it's a capacity question, and you should probably reword those. So instead of would, it would be could your school. Yeah. To have, does your school have the capacity? Does your facility have the capacity? If you ask them if they want us, that's going to throw up red flag, but I agree with Morgan, you might not. If we want to that. Response you're looking for? A response. Okay, so would your school have the capacity to be our school of record? Or to absorb 100 students? Yeah. As soon as you get in the area of like be our school of record, people are going to be like, whoa, uh -huh. there's a lot of political consideration there. Uh -huh. Capacity question, they can just answer without making any sort of judgment call. It's simple yes or no. Right. Or would you take us? That's a whole different well, can of worms. That would be a group decision, but I'm there now. Right. No one wants to be that person. You could say no one could, but I'm not going to tell you that. Nope. Nor do we. Right. And maybe we need to write something up that states that at the very beginning of these questions. that. This is to, and I think we discussed that further on in this because we did have some questions about that as to how we present this. I have questions yeah. about who, who we presented to and, the, and the, the avenue we take to do it as far as involving the superintendent of those school districts. Well, I think if there's a superintendent, it should always go to the superintendent. If we're talking, what? I would think you could do. There's no superintendent. Every superintendent, every super last one. Well, what I'm yes. saying is, does it come from do we direct our superintendent to, in fact, contact the superintendents of that? We're, we're, we're we, using we their that. superintendent. We can't we're direct him to do anything. We can we ask him to do something. If you ask it, we could just do it. My, my feeling, because I have served on the school committee and know the process that's followed there, is that we would not director, but possibly ask her to be the vehicle that contacts those superintendents. If we're going to contact them as a as a source of our questions, why not use our own to contact them? Yeah, I mean, she'll be. We have to decide. We have to go Yeah. Sorry, but you know, I just wanted to talk to one and to listen to one. I talk to him every day. I know you do. That's what I'm saying. I guess we don't. Yeah. So you have the obvious one to make time happen. Yes. Yeah. I actually, mm -hmm. I wonder if we don't call this survey. It's not, it's just information gathering. We're trying to put together a report. We need information. Right. It's not asking for opinions. Right. All right. So after we, went over those two questions we actually this was part of the conversation afterwards was how are we going to combine all of this how will we if we are sending this out to other towns and schools we believe that it is important that it's presented as a questionnaire about what is the best approach for the gray area you know and richmond and blue bay were uh, brought up in that conversation as well um, the next thing that we said we wanted to stress that we need to present everything in a positive light we don't want to turn away uh, anyone off to other options or ideas so it's basically it's a survey yeah we're trying to and so just trying to feel just that. trying to get information um and then i'd like
like to hear from the other subcommittees of what they actually meant and talked about as well. We did not mean circumstances did not mean that. So we have a little bit of information gathered, but we're not prepared to share it this time. So I apologize for that, but uh, so our committee that? for the saying it's okay. I'm saying no. I I say yes. I we say we, we should have because Sarah is trying to help us move along because one of the things that happens with a lot of committees going by town, yeah. they don't move ahead. We need to move ahead. So because it's something that we need to deal with. So yes, Jason. All right. I asked you to share. I wanted to be there as a committee first, but. <clears throat> So we have some information we got from Kim about what their what the school is talking about as far as expansion. So I can brush over that a little bit. We're doing some there's uh, eighth grade recruiting trips. Uh, there's this is year one of uh, pre K marketing. Uh, this, this is to get more kids into our school. Uh, we need public relations work, relationship building. Um, there's stuff about grant funding. Um, Competitive employment packages, what we did to the thing. So, like I said, this isn't really, you know, there's stuff the school's doing to try to get more students than there, there is, but we don't have a report on that. Um, and they're always trying to get more students. I have a list that I made, and this it depends on what people call status quo. I consider status quo not closing our school. We want more students. I mean, is that correct? Does everybody else think that we don't? We want to do yeah. better. We obviously want to do better, but we don't want to close our school. I think it would be a terrible mistake. To that, would be, that would be that would be Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So this is a, a question. This is a list of reasons not to close the school that I came up with earlier and just shared with my subcommittee members. Uh, Ten quick reasons uh, to keep our high school. We use it to educate our children, and we maintain local control of the process. It already exists and it has been well maintained. The building already exists. It is the largest employer in town and the ripple effects of closure are very hard to assess. But we can imagine people moving away and people for jobs and for other opportunities that work there. The possible savings aren't guaranteed and are not enough to warrant closure. A town with no high school is not attractive to move to, uh, especially the Shire town, I would think. Subcontracting out our responsibilities is not a good example for our children. Our teacher to student ratio is excellent. Once an important institution is removed, it is very hard to replace. Closure will negatively affect the Wisconsin Community Center. And pre K through 12th grade continuity is important for families and student success. A lot of larger families, you have the kids in one school, and then the high school kids, their older siblings that they arrive at school with are now on a different bus elsewhere. It's it's hard for the younger kids, you know. So that's that's just a quick list of reasons that I came up with. And I'll share that with you. I don't think people have thought about some of that. Culturally, this is a terrible idea. And I know we're here to find out all the options. But if we shut the school down, we're gonna regret it. There's no doubt about it. But the time will come that everybody will regret it. That's my heartfelt feeling. So, yeah. I just would like to ask if it would be okay if uh, I'm looked over this uh, information that was presented by Kim, and I think it would be really helpful if she would go over this with us as a group, just to look at what's happening now uh, with the schools. If you would be willing to do that, if you got a call, I think that would be helpful. I do. I can go through it. I don't have a copy of them. I was just gonna rest. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, the mission of our schools is to promote growth and change for all learners, and that's something that we've gotten away from over the past ten years. So, um, in our in our comprehensive needs assessment that we had to do over the summer for some SE funding. It brought it back to the surface, and that has to be the answer to every question we have at school. Every staff member, um, whether you're a custodian, a bus driver working in the kitchen, and every every ed tech, every teacher, when they're thinking about what are we going to do today, it has to make sure that it satisfies that. Is, does this promote growth and change for all learners? 
And in all learners, I also include our staff. I think that um, if we are a community of learners, then we're modeling that for all of our students. And that's really important. We have to walk the walk, um, walk the walk, talk, talk the talk. Thanks. Yeah, you know what I mean? So if the status quo were working, I, I, the subcommittee status quo, I don't really like because if the status quo were working, we wouldn't be here today, right? We wouldn't be sitting around this table if the status quo were knocking it out of the park. We know that we have work to do. Um, and so we're doing it. Um, so I don't know if these are in the best order, but the first thing that I jotted down was increase enrollment and the ways that we're working on, on increasing enrollment. Uh, three prong we're recruiting we're doing public relations and we're relationship building so under recruiting this will be year two of eighth grade recruitment trips that was part of that last year um i was happy we visited every eighth grade um, that has school choice around us um, including the center for teaching and learning um, who commented to us that we were the it was the first time was casa had ever been there but booth may goes every year to recruit We'd never been there before. So um, we are at homecoming. I met a, a young woman, a, a young lady, a freshman who is from Whitefield, and she remembered our red sweatshirts. And she told me that the reason she's at Miss Cassett is because of that recruitment trip. So um, we'll continue that momentum. We're also going to be increasing pre K. We've never done any pre K marketing. Um, We've got two things happening this year for that. We accepted a first 10 community grant. So we're piloting a program called First 10 um, for the state. And we have a, a social outreach coordinator. Um, she's a pre-K uh, administrator and teacher. And she joined our staff. Um, her job is to work with families and um, identify students and serve kids age zero to 10. And so our emphasis is on zero to five. And we're um, connecting these families with play groups, with story time at the library, with music together, with all of the things that um, I know I did with my kids, things that seemed like a normal, you know, this is what you do with your, your little kids before they're three years old, before they can go to a program that, um, not just in Wiscasset, not just in the state of Maine, but nationwide, people are finding that that's not happening. Littles are um, home and they're often isolated and they're arriving at pre-K um, completely unsocialized. So that is the first sort of guide is who's in our community and how do we connect them with school? The second is to expand our pre-K. When I started last year, we had a partial day um, pre-K that was not five days a week. So it didn't serve a great um, benefit for families who were looking for child care. So mid-year we transitioned to full day pre-K, um, five days a week. And this year we have a full program. And our hope for next year is to expand and have a second pre-K classroom. Um, a few years ago, we had uh, the opportunity to contract with RSU 12 to be the uh, recipient of all of their pre-K students and we, we didn't take that. And so they, and this was um, prior to my administration um, and they have, they entered into an agreement with Edge from Eddie, which is expiring. So I've been talking to Howie, it doesn't make sense to have these littles ride on the bus right through our town and over the bridge. Right. Um, so I'm hoping we can be able to market to at least our neighbors, uh, our closest neighbors in Alma and Port Island, so that they would have the option to choose our pre-K. There's also an expansion grant. Um, the grant is due October 31st. I'm going to be calling on some pre-K experts in the neighborhood who can help out with that. Um, but it's for up to $100,000 per pre-K classroom. And um, it can cover the cost of retro converting a classroom into being a pre-K classroom and also things like we desperately need a pre-K playground. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to work, work on that. Um, so that was recruiting. Next thing, public relations. We are on a daily basis um, working and we need to work harder um, because it's, we're not there yet, but just to get public positive press out to the media and on social 
media, um, print media, television. Um, we were very lucky last week, I'm sure everybody saw that we had the main state teacher of the year. And so we got a lot of positive press around that. Um, but that's, that's one teacher. We've got a lot of stellar staff. So we're going to keep highlighting our staff. Um, we're gonna keep highlighting student achievements. And we're gonna to continue to um, get information about our current programming out. So the first 15 minutes of every school committee meeting is dedicated to a presentation of a program that we're offering. I'm gonna alternate schools. So last week, last month uh, was the high school. This month will be, uh, November will be that something at the elementary school. Um, and then relationship building. We have in our time um, with the turnover and administration um, have sort of fits and starts made connections with our neighbors and um, I, I, I'm lucky that I've been here for some time and I've been in public service the entire time that I've been here so I have a lot of contacts that I bring to the job and I will continue with that and building that momentum. So we're increasing our collaborative efforts with our local community and with our neighbors, our neighboring communities and also the neighboring school districts. So, um, and how, how am I doing that? It's, it's not just me, it's our, it's our whole team because we all believe this promotes open change for all learners. Uh, we're talking and listening to community members. We're promoting enabling um, and enabling projects with local businesses. We are running extended learning opportunities. This is actually an exciting program um, that is in its first year, um, but we have a, a staff member whose job is to identify internships in the community where students can go and get real world working experience mm -hmm. while also getting paid a stipend that comes from JMG, um, Jobs for Maine's graduates, and also earning high school credit. And we already have some kids who are in ELOs this year, but I wanna see this really expand because um, there are all kinds of learners and not, not everyone you know, is gonna benefit from like a strictly traditional academic experience. Right. So, um, and then PI and boosters, we love them. We love our PTO and, um, and we invite them in and want them to be there and just wanna make everybody feel really welcome neighboring communities. So I've been out and about and attending different community meetings. Um, I, in that role, I sort of feel like I'm an ambassador for the school department and uh, I, don't, I don't go to necessarily do anything, but if a question comes up, I'm there to answer and speak the, you know, um, factually about this CASET. An example of that was at the Dresden community meeting. Um, they had been on the, the people who did the research had been on the data dashboard at DOE and our attendance data was atrocious, but it was also inaccurate. So I was able to stand and speak to the inaccuracy of the, the data, our data, uh, and which triggered another guy to say, well, actually, some of these have 100% truancy and that's not accurate. So I feel like it was really good that I was there because people were like, oh, this cat's it. And then I was able to resolve that. Um, and then with neighboring school districts, I do a lot of regional meetings and networking, and I'm always looking for opportunities for uh, professional development sharing and program sharing um, to benefit our students and our staff. So for instance, um, we're going to have an exchange of, of teachers PD program um, with area schools where if somebody has a stellar social studies teacher, I can send my social studies teacher there to observe for a day and then they in turn can send someone back to observe in our school. Um, today I was at the tech center in Bath and we were talking about satellite programming and what it would take to do satellite programming, the timelines, none of this stuff is fast. You, like, you know, to do a satellite program, you're looking at a two year turnaround, but it would be really neat if we could have a sort of um, outdoor leadership slash game warden slash forestry type programming here in Wiscasset um, for others. Their, their ideas are endless. Um, the next thing is continuous school improvement. So we have a lot of work to do. I'm not ever going to sugarcoat any of it, um, but we also have a lot of tools that haven't been put into use that exist already. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. One of those things is that comprehensive needs assessment, which is a requirement of accepting the SE money, which is your title funding. 
Um, this is a step-by-step -step, uh, sort of self-reflection of a school um, that you have to do every year, and it's not one and done. It doesn't sit on the shelf like a comprehensive plan. It's actually a, a living document that, if used, can be a tool that you um, re-reflect and revise as you go throughout the year. And so to ensure that that happens, um, we have a we have a SE coordinator um, and a community committee. Yeah, I don't know why I was at a meeting two, three years ago when I, either this was just going to be, I don't know, but I did see the comprehensive plan and was they were going through, <clears throat> was just observing, going through questions. They were incredibly thoughtful, insightful, and yeah. helpful. Um, could we have a copy of that? Yes, so we could see what it's posted on my website. Okay, the school website, but it's posted right there. Yes, you can look at the comprehensive yes. needs assessment, and you. I've also surveyed the community. Um, some people said, "Why? Why are we getting this survey if you don't have kids in the school?" That's part of it. Like you need to get yeah. feedback from your community on the work that you're doing in your schools, <laughs> um, and that's it's the requirements of the federal grant. So while they might seem cumbersome. Another perspective is that these are useful tools that will help us to, to move forward. Mm -hmm. We're also gonna continue leveraging our grant funds um, in different ways. So we have that first in community grant, which is to provide outreach for the littles, but I'm also gonna use those funds um, to identify <clears throat> kids for our pre-K program. We're gonna write the pre-K grant and it, it plan to expand, and I'm also going to use the ability to count those anticipated students in my student count for the EV 279. So we'll actually benefit from increased subsidy from anticipated students this year. Um, and just by paying attention, reading all of the DOE priority notices, um, I mean, they, they give you the information, you just have to be paying attention. I will um, continue to leverage those grant funds we have um, SE funds that we're using for visioning and planning and um, vertical alignment of our curriculum, K to 12. Something that you would think would be obvious, it just hasn't, we haven't done it lately, it hasn't happened. Um, also for behavior management. Um, and then E-Rate. E-Rate is a program, um, federal program where you can get funding for technology and we participated in E-Rate last year, and we will again this year, and we're using it for um, safety and security for this year. Um, staff development and retention. This is also under continuous school improvement. What is not helpful is turnover um, and staff. So we are ensuring that the staff that we have are excellent, and people who, um, who have areas for development are getting the attention um, and the mentorship that they need. We're also um, making sure our employment package is competitive. One of the very first things I did in this job was negotiate probably one of the biggest raises um, my attorney's ever seen over a three year period, but it was a game changer for staff because we had we were losing our staff eight years, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the steps because they, there was no movement. They weren't getting any increases year to year, and they could literally go to Jefferson or to um, really any other school and make twelve thousand dollars or more per year just by making a lateral move. So when um, teaching is such an important job and such a hard job to fill with excellent teachers, we have to keep the ones that we have, and we have to treat them really well and make sure they understand how valuable and important they are to us. Um, so we get to negotiate again next year, and I want to increase tuition offerings. Um, we, and then celebrating each other. It's really important that we um, cheer each other on. And at the uh, Teacher of the Year um, ceremony at the elementary school, we heard that the school pledge that they do every day at Wisconsin Elementary School. And I don't remember all of the words, but it was fabulous. And the kids recite it every single morning. And it's just about being being uh, ready to learn, you know, being respectful, being kind, and it ends with like a cheer, like go Wolverines or go Wolves, I think it says. Um, so celebrating each other. I think that's so important that um, the staff understands and knows how deeply loved they all are. And then capital improvement planning, this is really huge and probably the biggest part of my job besides budget um, is facilities. So we we don't have 
any document, well, we do now, but we didn't have a document that had a one, three, and five year plan for capital improvements with cost estimates. Um, and that's critically important so that we can plan um, and figure out how we're going to fund these things. One of the benefits that was CASIT has going for it is that our facilities manager has done an excellent job of taking care of our school. So um, the school's in really great shape. There are other towns around that have schools that are, um, they joke that it's outdoor learning because they can see like through, they can see through holes in the walls. And I'm not exaggerating or kidding. Like it's, we're very lucky that we've taken very good care of our school and we'll continue, continue to do that. Funding initiatives. Um, so seeking creative um, grant solutions. For instance, there is a special um, revolving renovation fund just for people who are going after the pre-K expansion grant. So if we go after that grant, then we can also apply for this other one for some money. And um, we we definitely need to find money for both of our buildings, um, the entryways, I think, need to be renovated so that they're safer. And I'm going to see if I can leverage some of that funding um, for the, that purpose. And then our fund balance, we have a fund balance here with the town, and um, I would like us to be able to um, utilize interest that's earned on those funds. Um, but even if we, we can't get that done, we can at least um, plan carefully and thoughtfully and plan ahead and uh, get the right questions answered when it's ballot time, right? We only get to access the fund balance when we do the warrant and um, yeah. So I got a lot of thoughts there. And then the last thing, I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but just review, reflect and revise. Like yeah, continuous improvement has to be continuously inspecting and what we are doing um, and what can be better and how we can make it better and who can help us do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, uh, I don't like status quo, but it's where Yeah, it probably has a different name, but I'm gonna take that back. So, yeah. um, thank you, Kim, thank you. Guys. Yeah, thank you a lot. Um, I don't think many people had that kind of view of what's going on in our school and I appreciate you pulling that together for our subcommittees. Thank you. It's the work. It's important to get it right there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Beth, could you will it? Uh, yes. Uh, Let me just pull up my notes. Um, so Pat Willard and I met with Kim today, actually. Um, and some of the things that we kind of went over was that, you know, currently we don't really have a direction to take and we're going to keep with the status quo for now until we really could move forward with anything else. Um, there had been a suggestion about uh, putting a regional school in Edgecombe, but apparently Edgecombe does not want that because they want to keep their school a choice. So, were you going to say something? I'll say it after. Okay. <laughs> um, there was talk about um, developing a trade tech center in West Cassett, um, and of course we talked about the decrease in students. Um, there was some talk about you know the process of regionalizing a school and what that looked like. And basically it needs to be approved by the Department of Education, um, who actually does want regional schools in small uh, communities. Um, so RSU doesn't currently have a high school. So there are definitely some of those um, elementary schools that we could approach about regionalizing. Um, let's see. Um, Definitely talk to um, Dresden, Whitefield, Anna, Alna, uh, Westport Island to see if there's any interest from them about joining a regional school. Um, let's see. So one of the questions was if we use the current Wiscasset High School as a regional school instead of building a new one, uh, the capacity of the high school, the middle high school is 450 students. There is room for the middle school students to stay in the building. Um, and there is a potential to increase enrollment by 170. I think that was only like with one school. Um, I was thinking 170 would be, that's the, the whole Dresden population. That's so we could, that would also be elementary. Okay, so, but if we had other schools coming in too, theoretically it could be. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So some of the improvements that would be need, need to be made to the school, which are already kind of in the works anyway, is the middle school needs improvements. Um, they need a playground. Um, we The Chiwanki trip was brought back this year. So the middle school is getting like constant attention now. Um, there was talk about maybe expanding the PTO to the middle school. Um, we talked about talking up the school, you know, getting all the good information out to the school. Like, you know, Becky Hollowell was the teacher this year. Educate the community on how the school works. Use marketing opportunities to share some positive news. Um, you know, the school is now fully staffed. We had the grant. We we're working on the grant to expand the, expand the pre-K. Um, and then afterwards, Kim was uh, very kindly sent me some information about uh, kids that are leaving Wiscasset to go to other schools and non-residents that are coming into the schools. Um, and with superintendent agreements, private school and homeschooling, there's 105 kids that are choosing, Wiscasset residents that are choosing not to come to Wiscasset. And there's non-Wiscasset non residents are attending Wiscasset, there's 62. So definitely a start to the conversation. Um, more questions to come, I'm sure, but. That's where we got today. So what I was going to say on the edge come thing is I really don't want us to go with that kind of shutting the door on something because there have been leadership of edge who have shut the door on it. There have been leadership of edge who have said they're in favor of it. And to my knowledge, there's been no survey or any kind of public information gathering of edge references. So I just don't want us to shut the door based on what some people have put out there as we don't want it. Well, because I also know people who do want it, so. Well, and I'm wondering, because I was listening to some of the questions you've had with your group, a blending of, in the questionnaire, of what our questions we came up with, with those kind of questions, so that it's not just, well, we want to close our school. No, it's looking at all the different options and asking different areas what they're thinking as well. So have the questionnaire be a little more, I don't know, open-ended or uh, yeah. a little more yeah. scattered. I don't know what the word is, but um, so that it's not just, well, we even said it. We don't want it to be one viewpoint that sours other ideas. Mm -hmm. We would like to have the questionnaires be right with all, all of these. the options. You know, in other words, we're looking at playing the school, mm -hmm. status quo, and the role we have, yeah. or being a regional school. Mm -hmm. Might get input because it affects every other than mm -hmm. the status quo. It affects the area communities. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you mm -hmm. know, they need all the information. And frankly, I think even with us growing our school, there's an area in these questionnaires for that piece as well. Yeah. Because the school is growing in the right way, it will become a regional school. Right. So, so I think mean, you will have to offer because are you saying sending to places other than those who have a school system? In other words, I, I don't I don't know yet. I don't know because I think I think go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I think yes to your point, keeping it general and open and whatnot, but I think you'll have to change the question slightly if you're just okay. gonna be sending them to superintendent versus a school board chair or a yeah. select board chair mm -hmm. or whatever. But I think if we hit all three oh, bot pods square is a golden opportunity in the sense that they really are struggling with the school right now, what mm -hmm. they want to do with it. They want to keep it open. They don't want to keep coming all the way to Holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a much better option for them. So that that really is, is an opportunity. I would so, suggest that you, 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 as the chair of the select board, talk to the chair of the Dresden Select Board. They were getting a report from their future Dresden School Committee. Yeah, so I was actually gonna ask you or anybody else, they, so the, basically the complimentary thing to this in Dresden, they're about a year and a half ahead of us, presented uh, in September, and I was hoping to get the, um, the 
file of the presentation. It's on YouTube, so you can watch it. But I'll see if I can get it from Leah, who's their chair. But I was going to ask if anybody knows if they said what next steps were. Their next step was they were going to take that report and present it to their select board okay. and then get um, instructions from the select board. Okay. Because <laughs> that's so they structured ours much like what we're kind of talking about here, which is. They had four options and they had many committees, they had subcommittees for all their four options. And then they put together information on okay. all of those options and presented them in the report. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that would be my suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, each, each, each subcommittee presents their findings and then as a group, we put it together as a report. Where they asked us how you know, to find the information on three separate criteria. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that went on recommending anything which is kind of the slot for the information. Right. Well, and that's, the, I'm looking at their slide, and that's very much what they did. They formatted the same for each of the options, you know, context, numbers, it's, it's all the same for all of them. And it's not, it's not one is greatly better than another. It's here's all the info. Yep. Um, so I will put on my to do list, you might find this down so I don't forget. Um, to get the um, actual file for that and send it around so everyone can mm -hmm. see. It looks like a PowerPoint presentation. So everyone can see how they did their report. Okay. Um, and I can send around the link too if you want to watch the whole hearing. Okay. Um, did any of the committees have a chance to talk about um, folks they want to have come in and speak to us, whether from other schools or state or whoever. No? Okay. So I would say if you can put that on next on your list. Okay. We also have a discussion about there's more than just an person is pretty. Yeah. There's a cultural and all of that. You can't put a price tag on it. That's just something that has to be pointed out. No. Well, and one of so this will help when I'm able to send this around because there are they actually have a lot of those just more qualitative rather than quantitative points. Mm -hmm. that we may not have numbers to back up something, but if we feel like it's a really important issue that would have to be looked at, we include those. Right. So, yeah, it will definitely be wrong. Mm -hmm. So would it make sense? I I mean, hopefully I can, I can get in touch with Leah tomorrow, hopefully, and then send the report around. And then if folks could meet with their subcommittees again, and start to and look at the Dresden report and then look at how some of the information that you've been gathering can fit into a report that looks like that in format wise. Okay, so does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So then where are we going to go with this question? Or is that where you are? Oh, so we need to come back to these questions. Um, As a so, group, do we want to wait until we go through this, or do we want to try to put these questions out to your statement Would it be more helpful if we hold on this until we see Dresden's report and see what they did in terms of information? Um, <clears throat> questions? Questions for the original question? They did something, they asked somebody else those questions themselves. I don't, I don't know. That's my own. That's I think what I have to, to get the information that they put in their reports. Right. Well, their report doesn't have details about what to do after. The results of their report were you can, and this is going back a couple of weeks, but you can um, stay in RSU2, withdraw from RSU2, and create a Dresden Municipal School Department, withdraw from RSU2, and have school choice for high school and middle school and have a dressed school department for the elementary school. And I think it was withdraw from RSU2 and join another school district. But they didn't actually have anything after that. Like, 
So they right. they met with me and last summer or two summers ago, and we talked all about options. Right, but I think they got in touch with other districts with more informational questions like this. Like I don't based on what they've got on the argument. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they, they, they sat down with yeah. Jesus. If yeah. they sat down with Kim last summer, should make any suggestions. Then maybe that's something that we need to right. bring as a committee. Mm -hmm. We need to sit down with some of these other people. Yeah. So yeah. So I think we do need to see what Dresden did, and then I think as groups we do need to come up with what is who we need to speak to and what we need to ask, and then if there's overlap, maybe we could do it together so that it doesn't sound like right. Yeah. It's only one option. Right. right. So you want to keep the others from feeling like we've got an agenda here. Right. Or that there's one subcommittee that has right. an agenda. That 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 would really blow a lot of good that we could do if it was as you said a while ago, open ended. And truly open ended. Mm -hmm. What are your ideas here? What are you asking in your school history? What are some things that you could suggest that maybe perhaps we look at? Those are all the open-ended questions, mm -hmm. but for, you know, the second they get the feeling that, oh, we must, we're drifting in this direction, so that must be where they want to go. Yeah. Right. Well, we I, don't I that. think that we don't want to give them the impression that right. we're planning on closing our schools. Exactly. We don't want to give them the impression that we're planning on regionalizing. We want it to be all of the above, yeah. so that we're... Just what, make open conversation. Right. Absolutely. So I think that, yeah, we need to see what Dresden has, and then I think we need to come together and write up what are those questions, that we're, and who are we asking? It's not just Dresden, it's that film, all of us, like the West Door. Yeah, all, yeah. Okay. So one person, who is he going to? Uh, well, that's part of what we want to know, how they did it. Which is oh, oh, okay, I see. Because yeah, I don't know the place. if with their four committees, I don't know if just Leah went and talked to whoever and went through all the questions or she came whatever. to me with um I think three other people. There were I there were say, four or five have, people in my office. You have four three or four subcommittees that should be represented probably from each one of them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. absolutely. That would make sense. Yeah. All right. So I will get a hold of the presentation, send the link, and you can all watch the presentation if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely look through the document. Um, and maybe actually I'll just give Leah a call. Okay. What's, what's, what's the position on the community? She was the head of their. Oh, that community. Okay. Yeah. She's not the board chair. Or the board chair. Not that I'm aware of. No. I think her husband's on the school board. She lost your school board? No, she's. Okay. And he was on the committee. Yeah, it's not right. Yeah. Well, we have three subcommittees. I would, I would think that we have a representative from each one of us. What yeah. we do sit down with each one. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So, so we. We good? I will get that out to you ASAP, and then you can meet with your. Subcommittees, you would start putting some structure around the info that you have, and, and then we can part of the report back will be what other information we need. Right, right. I did try to get some information about tuition rates and uh, didn't really get anywhere, but they, this I spoke to Eileen Kane, who's the deputy director of the club. We emailed him this week. She sent me the current rates that get set again in December. And but she said something interesting was that I guess it's because it's quite the private Lincoln Academy does something different that's more expensive than the tuition out there than it is the straight public schools. Okay. Yeah, she didn't explain it. She said they have a different formula. Yep. Than um uh, suicide. Just go on the Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. All right. Good. Everybody clear? Yeah. Okay. Me again. Second there. Good motion. Second. 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 Second.
Right. And well, unless something, unless it falls on a holiday or something, we'll we'll keep with the third Monday of the month. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Third Monday. So the next one will be November 18th. Yeah. 